India is one of the fastest growing country in Asia with almost 3 trillion US dollar economy. China is ahead in this economic race with the US. Having 15 trillion US dollar economy, China's GDP has significantly grown in the past couple of decades. Right now, the pandemic is set to disrupt every economy, including India. The gross domestic product is expected to fall for the next couple of quarters. So what exactly is GDP? Hey everyone, uh, so today I'll be talking about what is GDP, uh, gross domestic product. This is something that we come across a lot everywhere and a lot of people uh, understand this in terms of uh, comparing, you know, this GDP, this country's GDP is better, so they are usually better, the economy is performing better. It is used as an indicator to uh, explain the health of an economy, so what exactly it is. In simple words, it just means the value of all products and services produced in an economy at a given point of time. So that's what GDP is. Uh, but there are different uh, ways of calculating it, uh, the GDP. And to just make a note of when was it uh, developed or popularized, it was during the World War. Uh, an economist called Simon Kuznets, he was the one who uh, made this modern concept of gross domestic product, right? Uh, and uh, it is very important to note that he also mentioned GDP is very limited to only understanding the growth and not the welfare. So that is something that uh, when we learn about GDP, we should know. It only explains things in number. It does not explain welfare, right? All right. So with respect to the types, the methods of calculating GDP, there are uh, in, gen in broadly three methods. One, first one being the value added method, the second one being income method, and the third one being expenditure method. So the first one uh, of value added method, just to give an uh, illustration, uh, we know uh, a farmer is producing a, a crop, probably say rice. So that is being given to a mill who is uh, removing the shaft of the rice. And that is given to a hotel who is probably making rice out of it. And that is cons that is uh, given to the household to probably Swiggy or Zomato. And the someone in the house is consuming it. So basically in this particular transaction, that is from rice to going reaching home, you know, there's multiple uh, different transactions that's been happening. So in value added method, basically what we do is uh, the farmer has added some kind of a value because he's brought the seeds and that is that's the cost and he's produced something and he's selling it off so basically he's selling it off for some revenue so the difference between the cost and revenue that would be the value he added to the economy so he spent something and he is getting something so whatever is the difference is the value that the farmer added to the economy similarly the the mill the mill owner who is removing the shaft of the rice. So he is also adding on some value, whatever he is getting it from the farmer to whatever he is selling it. So the difference would be his value addition. Same way the hotel, the hotel is also buying the rice at one price and making the uh, making rice and then that difference amount would be the value he is adding to the economy. And it reaches the Zomato and you know the channel continues and it reaches the household. So finally the price that households pay is completely different from what the rice was initially paid for. So this sort of a system where each of the each of the individual are adding some kind of a value, the GDP would take in each person's value addition. So basically every sector's each person's value addition will be added together. So we in India we basically have three sectors, primary, secondary and tertiary. Primary would include all your agriculture, fisheries, mining, etc. Second, the secondary uh, sector would be your industries and the tertiary sector would be your service sector. So all the value added in all of these three sectors would be clubbed together to come to the value of GDP, right? A gross value added, the whole thing. So this is the first uh, method. The second method is income method. So in income method, what we do is uh, we basically add everyone's income so each of us are earning something right all of us are earning some money so we can consume only when we earn so each individual earning something are 
naturally assume to add some value because if they're earning something, that means they've added some value to the economy. So basically, everyone's income is added together, and that is uh, income method. So in this, you will have salary, uh, wages, and things. So you, you, I have a house, and I'm getting an income from that. So that will also be added in income method. So all any kind of income through wealth, through uh, working by giving labor or anything. Everything will be added together and that is the income method. The final one is the expenditure method. So the expenditure method basically means that it, it is very hard to find out each and everyone's income. So the other, this is an other method which will be like, it doesn't matter what you earn. At the end of the year, you're going to spend it, right? You're going to, you're going to spend on consuming something. So I can understand what is the total uh, product or the value that's, that the economy is producing by understanding or calculating how much everyone is spending. So basically everyone's expenditure, whatever I'm spending, uh, it could be private expenditure, private consumption expenditure individually, it can be what government is spending, it could be what industry and businesses are spending. So basically they're spending, whatever they're spending can be someone else's income. So by this logic, everyone's expenditure is added together to come out with the GDP. So this is another uh, method. So I broadly define these three methods. Um, however, in this video, I just wanted to give a picture of uh, an introduction of what GDP is. I want to know that we use a real GDP when we are looking at a, a comparison, a time series comparison for a country. And we use a uh, uh, GDP at PPP, which is purchasing power parity, uh, when we're doing international comparison. So I will be explaining what is real GDP, what is nominal GDP, what is purchasing power parity, and how to calculate GDP in detail in my upcoming videos. Uh, please do subscribe uh, and share it with your friends who are studying economics. So this will help you understanding economic concepts easily. Uh, proper feedback. Thanks.